around the world. <laughs> That'll probably help, won't it? <laughs> we receive reports from around the world and, uh, <clears throat> and from our congregations and fellowships. Uh, Waukegan is doing great and growing uh, in Haiti and in the Dominican Republic, in Mexico and Sri Lanka. All of those congregations are doing well and blessed and encouraged throughout these difficult times. In our fellowships in Charlotte, North Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida, Minnesota, Texas, Hawaii, California, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, New York, Mississippi, Wyoming, in Yakuska, Japan, Barbados, Africa, England, and from individuals who are uh, worshiping with us from around the world in their homes, on military bases, and on ships at sea. We st we've been able to stay connected, stay encouraged, and work together as we uh, seek the blessings that God has for us. I'm really thankful for all of you who have worked hard to keep communications up, making sure that no one is left behind, that everyone's needs are being attended to. I want to thank everybody that's working so hard to, to make sure that the seniors who are locked in in their homes are getting phone calls and words of encouragement and groceries dropped off as needed and, and uh, prescriptions picked up. I appreciate very, very much what everybody's doing to make it possible for all of us to abide by the rules of, of this lockdown, but still have fellowship and encouragement. Um, we've received reports that fellowships are actually growing even in the midst of this crisis, and people who cannot uh, worship with the regular church who have not been attending church are all logging in on live streams and, and Skype fellowships and Zoom casts and other things, and the gospel is still being preached, and we're seeing people come to the Lord. This Easter Sunday is special for me because... Uh, of two reasons. Uh, Easter is always special because it's, it's when we celebrate our risen Savior. And, and we're going to talk about that in the message today. I love Easter. It's such a, a, a time of hope and a time of promises fulfilled, and I'm so thankful for that. But uh, today is my 66th birthday, and it's also the, the day that I officially retire as president of the board of Christian Fellowship Church Ministries International. It's been my privilege. Uh, I've been in the ministry since 1976. That's when I was ordained, and I've been full-time in ministry since 1986. And, uh, and Pastor Ulysse becomes the president of our international board today, officially. We'll have an installation ceremony when, when time permits, when we can get together again. We've also got some other exciting uh, things to celebrate, and unfortunately we won't be able to get together the way we'd like to for those. A week from today, in our congregation in Waukegan, Illinois, uh, two pastors will be installed, Kirk Orlop and Malcolm Zachariah. And uh, we'll have a proper installation service and celebration with them when the time permits. Someone asked me, are we going to have a retirement uh, celebration for me? And uh, we'll do that sometime. Maybe it'll be conference next year. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But we're going to continue to worship together and work together. I want to remind you again that our conference date has been uh, rescheduled to June uh, 2021. That'll be the 23rd through the 27th. June 23 through 27, 2021 is the, um, the new date for our conference. It was scheduled for this June, but of course we had to, to change that because of the restrictions we're currently under. So God is blessing. Things are happening. We have some prayer requests um, that I don't see on this sheet. But please pray for your brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, Pastor Ulysses' wife, Lalin, her brother, has been uh, diagnosed with the COVID virus, and we want to keep him in prayer. Our sister Ann in Waukegan is in the hospital with pneumonia, and she's currently being tested for uh, the, the coronavirus. And we just really want to keep all our brothers and sisters in prayer and, uh, and, and just trust that God's going to minister to those needs. And uh, I, I want to say a prayer for those of you who are suffering financially during this difficult time. And uh, if we can help you as a church family, we want to. And, uh, and, and, and on the other side of that same thing, those of you who've been giving consistently since we haven't been able to meet, thank you for continuing to minister that way and meet the needs of the ministry. It allows us to continue to do what we're doing, and it's much appreciated and greatly uh, needed, and we thank you for that. Um, I'd like to ask you, if you would, please, to, to pray with me, and then we're going to have a song this morning and, uh, and get into our message. 
God Almighty, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for how you love us. We thank you that you've been with us every step of the way, that you've never left us, you've never forsaken us, and you've been with us throughout these challenges that we're going through right now. You've ministered to us in our daily lives, and we thank you for that. And now I ask, Lord Jesus, that you'll bless this service. Everyone that's watching this service today, listening to it today, I pray that you'll speak to their hearts, minister to their needs. I know there are some who are listening today who may be discouraged and they need some encouragement. Some who are, are listening today and, 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 and they're really still not sure if you're real. They, they're, they're still investigating the claims of Christ and they're wondering, is it true? Is it possible that there could be a personal relationship? Does it matter? Speak to them today. Let them hear from you today. God, for those who are encouraged and doing well, let them find means to, to reach out to others and encourage them and be part of, of the blessings that you're providing. We just thank you for your, your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your presence, your love. We thank you for all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. Listen. Where do you begin the Easter message? Maybe, maybe you start in Genesis 1-1, where we read... Oh, thank you. <laughs> maybe you begin in Genesis 1-1, where you read that uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Or, or maybe you go to Matthew, the first chapter in the 18th verse, and you begin with, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Or perhaps... Because it's Easter, you go to the garden where Christ is praying before he goes to the cross. And he cries out in Mark 14 and verse 36, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. Or, or maybe we spend time this Easter and we, 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 we look at the words of Christ as he speaks to people after he walked among us and he performed miracles, he was betrayed, he was crucified, he was buried, he was resurrected. He's alive. He always was, he always will be. He's alive. And that's good news for you and that's good news for me because we need a Savior. We are human beings and we're in a very human condition. We need a Savior. And here's the good news. We have a Savior. Jesus Christ is alive. And we're separated from God by sin. But there's good news today. We have a solution to that separation. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, we, we, we read that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I know it's not popular to say those things today. Some people say, oh, don't talk like that. Just, just, just be nice and, and eat. you know what? If there, if you were in a building and it was on fire, it wouldn't be nice to stand by and say, I don't want to shout fire. That might scare somebody. I, I would want to help. Shedding of blood was always used by God. In Exodus chapter four and verse nine, during the first Passover time, in the time of Moses, the, the Lord instructed people to sacrifice a lamb and to put some of that blood on the side and above the doors. And this was to protect them from the angel that was coming and would, and would take the uh, firstborn male. And it was a horrible time, but it was the blood that provided protection. In Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, we read, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Every rabbi will tell you the importance of the blood. For it is the blood that take, taketh an atonement for the soul. And today, Christians no longer have to offer the blood because it was offered once and for all. The blood that Christ shed on the cross was shed for you. And it was shed for me that we could have remission of sins. In the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter and the 17th verse, we read, Think not that I am come to destroy. This is Christ speaking. He said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. 
Jesus came to fulfill the law of the prophets, and it is fulfilled today. He's alive. It's the greatest love story ever told. And because he shed his blood at Calvary, we have the gift of his perfect sacrifice for our sins. In the Gospel of John, the third chapter, the 16th verse, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a gift, this salvation we talk about. It's not something we can earn. It's just offered. And our challenge is to accept it or to reject it. I was 19 years old. It was August of 1973. And this simple gospel message that I'm sharing with you today was presented to me. And I said, yes. I asked Jesus to become my Savior, and I invited Him to be my Lord. And I began following Him. Were there sacrifices? Yes. There were things that I found weren't in harmony with the plan God had for my life, and I had to let those things go. But I found that they were replaced with better things. Everything we give up to follow Christ. Remember, Jesus was, was picking those who would work with him, and he said, drop your nets and follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. They were fishermen. They knew how to do that. But he said, I'm going to take what you know and use it for a more important mission. Instead of catching fish to feed people, you're going to catch people and feed their souls and help them understand what's the most important decision they'll ever make in life, and that's to be at peace with their heavenly Father. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man, that's you, that's me, hears my voice and open the door, I'll come in to him. Have you heard his voice? Have you opened the door? In the Gospel of Matthew, the seventh chapter, in the seventh verse, Jesus says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he appears to people. He appears to his disciples. He appears to thousands of people. We don't have an exact count. We know that at one point, he appeared to 500 at one time. Jesus stayed, walked among us for 40 days after his resurrection, confirming that he was dead and now he's alive. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18, Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 39, Jesus said, Behold my hands and my feet. This is when he was speaking to his disciples. He said, Look, I have proof that it's me. You knew that I was dead when they took me from the cross and put me in the tomb, but the tomb couldn't hold me. He said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And his first appearance after he left the tomb was to Mary Magdalene. And in and, and, and John chapter 20 and verses 14 through 16, And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, that's Mary Magdalene, and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. And she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. She recognized that it was Jesus, and he was no longer dead. He had now been resurrected. He was alive. And we can have life today because Jesus brings us that life. And I came to tell you today that Jesus is alive. The Messiah of the prophets, born a virgin, lived a sinless life, crucified for our sins. He died, he was buried, he was resurrected, and he's alive today. 
You might want to say to me, why, Pete, why do you keep saying he's alive? What, what, what's the point of harping on that so much? It's the confirmation that Jesus was the Messiah that was prophesied of the prophets of the Old Testament. If he had died on the cross and stayed dead, we, we wouldn't have the fulfillment of the prophecy. But there's prophecy after prophecy after prophecy of the Old Testament, speaking of the Messiah to come. And Jesus has fulfilled every one of those prophecies, including the fact that he's alive. He comes to us with an invitation today. Whosoever will, let him come. King of kings, Lord of lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. He's alive and he invites you today to believe. He invites you today to receive, to say yes to his invitation. I came to tell you today that it's not about joining a church. It's not about doing some specific act that, that, that wins you favor with God. It's about saying yes to his invitation. It's about saying, God, I'm a sinner, and I need you. God, I, I, I don't know how to speak to you exactly. I don't know how, I can't see you. But I, be, I, I believe it's time for me to reach out and say, I'm willing. I, I'm willing to, to try. You know, in James we read that if we draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to us. It didn't say if you study enough that you know exactly how it works. It didn't say if you like everything you've read in the Old and New Testament that you'll be saved. There's lots of things that I, I read and I live by, and I would prefer they were different. But God is God. In that first chapter, Jesus is appearing to, to, to those who followed him, who worked with him. And, and after he left, they weren't sure exactly what their mission was. They weren't sure exactly what they were supposed to be doing. And I'm reading from the Gospel of John in the first verse of the 21st chapter. He says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, We go also with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately that night, and they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore by the disciples, excuse me, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus may be standing on the shore of your life today, and you don't know it. You don't know it's Jesus. But these men had walked with Jesus, and they were about to recognize who he was. They were about to be reminded afresh that he was there with them, and he had never left them. He had never forsaken them. And Jesus saith unto them, children, have ye any meat? Jesus knew the answer. They didn't have any meat. They answered and said unto him, no. And he said unto them, cast your net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Jesus met them where they were, and Jesus will meet you where you're at today. Jesus meets you where you're at, whether you've been fishing and you've caught nothing, or whether your life is going well, whether you have everything in order, Jesus will meet you where you're at. I'm not saying that being a Christian is easy. I'm saying it's worth it. God loves you. And I came today to invite you to say yes to Christ. I came today to say to you, he stands at the door and he knocks. And I encourage you today to open and say, okay, God, I'm willing. I'm willing to learn more about you. I'm willing to, to come to know you. I'm willing to hear from you personally in my heart. I shared a little bit of my testimony earlier that I was 19 when I said yes to the Lord. I really had never understood that I could have a personal relationship with God Almighty, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I didn't know completely what I was saying yes to. 
I just knew that if the Scripture was true, that God is love, I wanted what He had for me. I wanted the promise of God alive in my life. And I came to tell you today that He's alive. It's the greatest love story ever told. Pray with me, please. God Almighty, I thank You. I thank You for the opportunity that we have today to celebrate Easter. To celebrate a risen Savior. A fulfillment of the prophecy that You would send a Messiah. I thank You for the privilege that we have in our homes today, sitting there watching on iPhones or computers or televisions or whatever it is. And right where we're at, let us each say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I accept you. Maybe you've been a Christian for many years and you're saying, yes, Lord. I accept you afresh. Just like you would tell your, your, your husband or your wife, I love you. You don't need to say it again. They already know it. And yet, don't you want to? God wants to hear us say to him, I love you, God. Thank you for giving me this invitation. Thank you for giving me this chance. God, we come to you today and we ask you to just take us the next step on our journey of faith. Help us to grow in you. Help us to be what you have us to be. To live how you'd have us to live. To embrace your gift so freely offered and so freely given. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.